What's up YouTube, it's your boy Eddie here, and today we're going to do another operator review. And today we're going to talk about beeswax. Now a lot of you guys might have a beeswax laying around, whether you're invested in her, you know, I'm not sure, she's pretty niche, you know, not a lot of people use her, and uh, that's exactly why I want to cover her today. Now, um, Beeswax is a defensive caster, and uh, it's a pretty unique archetype, but there's not many of them. And um, what that basically means is that when her skill is not active, her defense and her resistance is greatly increased. Now, to be exact, her defense is increased by 200%, and then she gets 20 res. Now, in this case, with her max stats, for 225 defense, when her skill is not active, she'll go all the way up to 675 defense, and then she'll have 35 resistance. So in other words, she becomes thick, and I'm talking about thick, thick, thicker than a bowl of oatmeal. This girl here, when her skill is not on, she can tank a lot of shit, and her talent helps her survive even more. So when her skill isn't active, she's restoring 4% of her HP every second. So, one of the main things, you know, I think Beeswax is useful for in terms of her talent alone and her trait is she's a good stall and a good bait for ranged attacks. So, if you want to kind of protect some of your frontline units from range and magic attacks and, you know, archers and other things that throw projectiles, you know, you just plop Beeswax in the line of fire or you put her in last, you know, so she soaks up all that damage. And in a lot of cases, her regen alone, this 4% here, can keep her alive. Um, and if the pressure is really hard, you know, you could also have a healer too, and that just makes her like really, really, really survive. But um, a lot of times her regen by herself is, you know, it's just great, just fine by itself, depending how much pressure you put on her. Now, the second tidbit to her, um, her trait is that when her skill is actually active, she attacks everything in that range, which is true AoE. If there's 50 enemies in that range of hers, she's hitting all of them at the same time. And, uh, you know, that itself is very useful. But, um, her skills, right? I wouldn't say that she'd be used for really tanky enemies. I'd say that she's good for using, like, like hordes of really, like, weak enemies. Like slugs and just things that are, you know, not too tanky. So, um, for her skill one... Right? It's an 18 SP cost, which is very nice. And then her attack is increased by 60% and her range expands. And it's a decent expansion, you know. And then with the 60% attack, with her 805 base attack stat, you know, that's a fairly good damage bump that she's doing there. And um, for the low SP cost and a 20 second duration, it's a very solid skill. And uh, if you need a little bit of on-demand AoE burst, that skill one is really good. Now, for the skill 2, you know, it's a little interesting because she gets an actual object called the Guardian Obelisk. And uh, this thing is really cool. With the Obelisk, right, um, at E1, level 1, already, it has 4,000 HP. And to note, it blocks 3, which is really useful. So when you max her out at E170, it goes to 448 defense. And when you go to E2, it goes up to 5,000 HP which is a pretty sizable chunk. And when you max her out, 
it goes to 560 defense this obelisk here is a really good stall and um there's a lot of times where it's kind of saved my ass when i freaking do this done and um yeah it's real useful tidbit about um beeswax's obelisk stats here now jumping back into the skill too right so now that we know the obelisk stats you know there it's tanky as shit as well now when she drops it It'll do 300% attack as arcs damage to nearby enemies and she'll stun them for 3 seconds, you know, to be more clarified on the details. And um, this itself, it's, it's very awesome, you know. There are some times, I'm actually going to show a clip, right, uh, how useful the obelisk can be, you know, where she can plop it down and kind of distract some things. Or she can, you know, block some things, you know, it'll be very useful in that case. Alrighty, so in this clip we're going to display two things. First thing, we're going to show her obelisk actually blocking. And the second thing, we're going to show her actually obelisk soaking up damage and uh, protecting cutter here. So um, this isn't going to be practical. You know, this is just for the sake of the showcase. Um, we're going to drop these wax first here. And we got three dudes coming, you know, no blocker, but no problem. We just pop these wax and then she's got this real tanky picture here. No, no problem blocking, cool. You know, buying some time. Yes. Get Andrew over there. Just cut her over here. Boom. Alright, and soon we're gonna have some cashers over here come and try to rush us. But we're gonna use Beeswax's pillar to soak up the damage long enough for uh to do damage and then for Cutter to kill him. So uh, we actually wanna just cut his and to protect Cutter, we're actually going to drop the pillar right here. And it's going to distract long enough Cutter to kill the casters. Now, we barely made it, but you know, this is for the sake of the showcase. You know, sometimes maybe you can't get a healer out right away, or maybe a contingency contract, you know, you're having some kind of wonky strat. This is just showcasing that, you know, you can use the pillar, you know, to protect certain operators, or, you know, when she's not actually with her skill off in tanking stuff, like the pillar can kind of take her place, you know, and tank things while she's attacking at the same time. And uh, that's just a little tidbit about her skill, too, that I wanted to showcase here. Now, moving right along, we're going to cover Beeswax's base skill, which is a, is a really damn easy one to cover. So, um, at Elite Zero, she's going to have default caster um, specialization speed plus 30%. Uh, when you E2 her, she gets that sweet 50% on the specialization training speed. So, uh, she'll be able to get your caster's mastery up quicker, you know? So, um, if anything, you know what I mean, you can E2 Beeswax for that caster training speed. And uh, that alone is very useful and a good investment you know in my personal opinion alrighty so in conclusion um, beeswax is very adorable she's a defensive caster and her main role is to with her talent and her trait she can soak up damage and kind of aggro and bait ranged attacks you know and pr help protect your operators you know what I mean she can heal herself and um, she has good aoe you know nothing too crazy not high aoe damage but she can definitely take out hordes of like small enemies with her aoe and for her skill too you know she can drop the obelisk the obelisk can block on the ground and can soak up damage while she does damage at the same time so she has that utility there on top of this done now is beeswax worth building now if you're free to play and uh, you can't spare that much resources, I will say Beeswax is not a must build operator. She's a bit more like of a luxury. Now, um, if she's waifu dude, then by all means, 100% build her. But um, as a new player or free to play, you know, you can get the job done with a defender and a healer and just, you know, go about your day. Um, but Beeswax, she kind of offers a little bit more flexibility, you know. And, uh, you know, sometimes, maybe, you know, uh, a certain defender can't handle certain magic damage coming in. And uh, with Beeswax's higher resistance, you know, she's better at tanking magical damage, you know, if need be. But uh, like I said, you know, she's not a must build, you know, she's a luxury, but um, in the same token, you know, she's a really awesome operator. And uh, I do think that if you even show a slight interest in beeswax, 
you know, to check her out, you know. Even at Elite 1, you know, she can do her job, and uh, she can soak up a lot of damage. You know, she only gets better the more you invest in her. But um, I really do think that she's great, and um, I hope this video shed a little bit of light on Beeswax and, you know, let you guys know that, hey, you know, she can do this, you know, and what she's capable of. And um, that's all I wanted to say, you know. She's actually, you know, from Sargon, you know, Capernet. And, uh, and you know, a funny thing about Beeswax is she actually takes a lot of pride in her horns. You know, she has, like, a whole series and a whole, like, a... Uh, like a series of things she does, you know, she wipes it with fine cloth, she polishes it with oils and stuff, and uh, the Capernet race, they really hold a lot of pride in their horns, and I think that's interesting. But uh, yeah, man, she's totally cute, totally awesome, and uh, this was my Beeswax review, and uh, hope you guys have a damn good one. See ya.